So Guillermo Canales has sent me yet another letter with a generous donation to the channel. Um, and he asked for me to do, he, he sent me this and, and a letter with some money in it. Um, and he asked me to cover Farmhouse and Lovely Molly, which he already sent me like a year ago. And I feel like an asshole that he has to pay me extra money uh, like a year later for me to review them but man I, I don't do this on purpose I promise I, I don't ignore the movies that people have sent me but you have to remember over the years now people have sent me probably a hundred films or more that I haven't watched and it's just very hard to keep up with it especially since I'm always trying to keep up with everything and I have to be in the mood for certain things so I'm not ignoring them I promise I'm, I think about it all the time I really do so when I got this letter, I was like, oh shit, okay. Farmhouse, no problem. Lovely Molly, no problem. In fact, I don't even know what I'm going to do right now. Um, let's do Farmhouse, fuck it. Uh, you see how prepped I usually am? All right. So, Farmhouse starring Steven Weber and Kelly who? Okay, that joke's way played out. <laughs> Listen to Exploding Heads. It's fucking, that joke is like every day. Kelly who? What, who was the person I was like, oh, th this would be so funny if they were in a movie together. It was like Kelly Who and I think somebody had like the last name of like Y or something like that. And I was like, oh, it was like a guy. And I was like, oh, they should get a fucking, you know, they should have a wedding. I have to think of what that is. Anyways, all right. So, all right. The first thing I want to say is that these are, I have seen Lovely Molly before. I have not seen Farmhouse. These were both very, very cool, interesting picks because both of them explore territory that is extremely open for discussion and debate. And I don't know if there is a clear-cut answer to anything. Um, it really is up to your... Uh, just, um, it's up to your opinion. I mean, you really can just take it whatever way you want to take it and with this farmhouse <laughs> man i really sat there after thinking about like hmm how okay wow interesting what what happened here now the movie has some downsides and and really the downsides come from like technical aspects like cgi that they use towards the end especially obviously we're going to be talking about spoilers here but there's some cg at the end where like satan comes out and um, you know, the, the hell is supposed to be behind him and um, the outfit choices that they picked for Steven Weber and Kelly Who to wear um, and, and the way they look and all that. It just, it, it really hurts the movie. It, it's, it's a bummer because the film is, is pretty damn good outside of these nonsense things that they, that they attach to the film which immediately date and cheapen the film. That said, I'm somebody who can totally look past that kind of stuff as long as the film is good. I mean, shit, look at Event Horizon. Event for fucking Event Horizon has these really bad. Like when he turns around and he is missing his eyes and it's so CG, it looks terrible. It's, it's really hard to, to even watch, to be honest, when I look at it. I'm like, God, this looks so bad. Um, and this, this does suffer from some of that. But... If the film's solid, then it's, you know, I can look past it. Hence why I still love the Langoliers, even though it might have the worst CGI of all time. Um, but, all right, so, <laughs> what to even say about this movie? I mean, you are dealing with some despicable characters here. And what's interesting and what's ironic is that the despicable characters that are on the surface end up really just being a you know punishment for the real sickos for the real fucked up people in this movie which are our main characters which we find out at the end which you can kind of figure out shortly i i, I don't want to say too fast but you can figure it out I mean, it, it, you're going to be skeptical when they when they crash. You're going to be like, okay, did they did they die? You know, if if you've watched enough movies. But towards the end, it, it becomes very obvious what's happening. Um, 
that being said, <laughs> got it. It's hard to. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna stick to my notes because I'm gonna get way too off track with this one because there's just I don't know. My brain was seriously reeling all last night when I was sitting in bed. Like, hmm, who is that? What does that mean? This opening scene, I'm still unclear about. Maybe I need to rewatch this scene. I should have maybe done that, but. So our, our main character is a little girl and she's remembering back to her mom who left her behind at a church. And then this guy comes up behind her and talks to her about her father and how, you know, what a shit guy he was, I think. And then when we f go to the end of the movie, that guy is Satan. Um, so that I'm confused about. I, I don't understand the relevance of that scene. And maybe I can have someone explain that one to me because I'm, I'm really confused. And that's not the only thing I'm, I'm confused about, but I feel like I have a better grasp on everything else. It's just that scene that I'm struggling with a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'd have, to, I'd have to go back and look at it again to figure it out. Um, so, Guillermo, yeah, I'm sure you've seen this a bunch. You bought it for me, you asked for it. I, I, I can assume that you have all the info on it. If I'd seen this movie 10 times, five times or something, shit, even like one more time, I'd probably have a pretty solid answer. Unfortunately, I just don't have the time to watch these things twice before I can review them. Um, but that, yeah, that scene, I, I don't get it all. So they're driving and they fall asleep behind the wheel and they crash and this is when they die obviously in the movie it does not appear that they do but they did which ends up being the irony there's a lot of irony in this movie and that one being you know the first and because he was going to fall asleep fall asleep at the wheel and die so that he uh, could get that life insurance policy to protect his wife and his kid and of course we find out at the end which might be the most fucked up ending reveal of any film that I've ever watched they murder their child for a life insurance policy to pay off his debt and to start a new life because the kid has like health complications and they're like don't want to deal with it so they're like fuck it let's just murder the kid and then start anew that's dude dude i've seen a lot of reveals i've seen a lot of shitty characters in movies this is like this doesn't just take the cake man it bakes it it takes it it fucking eats it it shits on it it throws it against the wall my god fuck <laughs> when they reveal that i'm like wow and then of course the other irony is is that she is drowned and he is powerless to stop it. But, it, okay, shouldn't say powerless. He's he's given the chance to stop it. You know, Stephen Weber's character sits here and he's like, all right, it's, kind of, it's up to you. Be a man, stop it, whatever. I'm going to give you the chance. And this was the chance he didn't take because he could have stopped her. You know, he just watched and he calls him like the biggest fucking coward he's ever met. Now, at this time, before this reveal happens, you're sitting there like, and Stephen, I love that Stephen Weber comes over and he's like, next time use your head. And he just knocks the fucking bowl over, you know, kicks the chair out from under. I thought that was great because I didn't even think of it in the moment. Like, hey, just go kick the wall. I'm sure if I was in that situation, to be honest, I'd probably just go right after that thing. Uh, that being said, my initial response was get to your fucking feet, use your hands that are behind your back, grab it, and then lift it up. Like, that was an obvious. So that was kind of stupid by him to try to grab it with his teeth. But then I do like that he grabs it with his teeth and then rolls and wraps it around his face and his neck. I thought he was going to hang himself. Tried to save her life. But yeah, I mean, when they're torturing her... And they're just, you know, drowning her one over and over and over again. And he's like sitting there and she's like, if you don't watch, you, uh, I'll, you know, we'll kill her. <laughs> Dude, the torture in this is fucking brutal, man. It's not gory. It's just like when you, when, when you realize 
and watch what they're doing you're just like this would be pure torture this is like mental torture and then there's physical torture too of course when Kelly Who's character takes a fucking cheese grater a cheese grater which you never see used in movies which I'm always shocked by because it's such a brutal weapon for torture taking a cheese grater to somebody's kneecaps she takes a cheese grater to this chick's kneecaps, then flips it around, takes the other side to her other, you know, to her knee, and gets to the bone, and then goes to start on the other one. Could you imagine taking a cheese grater to someone's fucking knee, to your knee, and just fucking, oh my god, man, it's so vicious, it's so vicious. Um. Uh, Stephen Weber's character in this name, and Stephen K- Weber's character's name in this movie is Samael. Uh, he specifically states it like, no, 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 it's pronounced Samael, uh, which I looked up, and that is one of the angels of death. So right there alone, I mean, if you knew anything about um, archangels and stuff, then you'd be like wait a minute what's going on here uh i don't know shit about any of that stuff so when he when he said it i was like that sounds biblical but to what effect i had no idea and i figured that he was just you know uh a religious man because i didn't i didn't figure anything supernatural was happening in this movie i just thought it was like a kidnapping movie and these guys were going to kind of get away in the end but they were still gonna owe the bookie you know kind of like the collector when he's in the house and he's just trying to get out because he's trying to get the money back to his family before this people uh, do something to his family which end up which ends up not even being really a thing in the collection which kind of frustrated me because he never made it in time so his family should have been killed and that would have been a great part of the collection is if he found out that you know this dude in the movie killed you got his family killed by stopping him. If it wasn't for him, he would have got out in time and would have saved his family. He would have wanted him. That would have given him all the reason to go in there with those SWAT guys. They wouldn't even have had to have forced him in there because he's like, no, I don't want to go in with you guys. See, if they would have written it the right way, he would have killed the family, and then these mercenary guys would have came in, and he would have been like, I'm at the front of the charge, and they'd be like, yo, we're the, we're the professionals here, and he's like, get the fuck out of my way, you know? And then they were like, you need to listen to us, blah, blah, blah. See, that would have been a better dynamic to me. But that's just me anyways, moving on. <clears throat> um, and uh, let's see. Blah, blah, blah. Dude, when he, when he cuts that blind kid's eyes out, or deaf kid's eye out, oh, man. Even though it's CGI, just taking a knife to some kid's eye and cutting it out and forcing that girl to expose herself. See, I don't know, though. What is this scene? Because this scene makes it seem like she cares and that she would, you know, stand up for what's right and, and do the right thing and has this mor- it has this morality to her. I think it would have been better if she stayed quiet the entire time and let this kid get both of his eyes cut out you know and then she would have not come and then he would have slit his throat and then he would have been like you bitch and then he would have found her anyway that would have been better to me um just because of the end reveal now in the film before i knew that i liked how it played out because she finally was like dude okay enough stop it and then he slits the kid's throat anyways fucking brutal that is so mean spirited the cheese grater cutting a freaking deaf kid's eyes out and then slitting his throat anyway doing the way he is and he acts to this kid but these guys are like demons you know they're like they're 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 fucking um lackeys for satan so what do you expect they're they're expect they're supposed to be in hell this is hell they're supposed to get cheese graters to the knee. They're supposed to get fucking drowned over and over again. They're supposed to be mentally tortured, physically tortured. So that all makes sense. Um, when the guy wouldn't shoot Stephen Weber, I was mad. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? And then he finally pulls the trigger. But regardless, I was still pissed because I was always like one of these things. But then the end of the movie happens and you find out he's a coward, right? So... 
he's <laughs> this makes perfect sense why he couldn't pull that trigger up until the last second because he doesn't act that's his whole fucking thing man he can't act to save what he cares about you know and i and i like that so it makes sense it was just in the moment you're like shut the fuck you know stop um and why they wouldn't make sure he was dead is beyond me but it ends up not mattering because he does run him over like three times with the car that ends up not mer that doesn't matter at all um now is the deaf kid their son is is that what's happening here i hope i don't think so or maybe it is i don't know when the kid comes over and he says his name i don't I don't know. I didn't know how to take that. Like that his, their own son was punishing them. That would be really cool. I would like that element, but I wouldn't want to think the kid went to hell. Um, maybe he's just there to help them torture them. And then he can leave whenever he wants. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. And then, um, but yeah, when, when, uh, when they're talking to the devil, um, it's just when that when that end reveal hits and you find out why they've been tortured and why they had the things happen to them and all that, I think it's I think it's fucking great. I think that's fucking awesome. It's really dark. It, it's not a change that you typically see. Um, and they really yeah they really go for it. So I I dug the hell out of that. Um, and. Yeah, I just, I just still don't get the opening. So if someone could tell me the opening, that would that that would help a lot. And um, I like when he puts the meat thermometer in her fucking head, and then he moves it around, and her eyeball like moves with the thing as he's turning it. That's that's pretty awesome. Even though it's CG, it's not that bad. Like that one's not too noticeable. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, I would assume when she's being resuscitated by him, he's giving her mouth to mouth and all that. Um, there is no way she could die. So what happens from here is the question. Like, are they just they're just put into hell? Like, do they do this to everyone that gets into hell? Like, you get this like, you know, screw with you, make you think you're still alive, or do they make them replay this over and over again? Are they stuck in this area with Samael and his wife? Like what happens next after after the scene closes, credits roll? Like what what then happens? Uh, I'm curious on that, but um, for the most part, yeah, they they are fucked. Like, and I love the irony. I love that they end up crashing and dying at the wheel, just the way that they originally came up with to scam the insurance company by his death. That was great. Her getting drowned. And him not doing anything about it was great. Like, stuff like that. That's all really cool writing. And um, if this just, yeah, CG would have would have been uh, used less. Um, I think this could have been, I think this could have been, uh, I think this should have been, regardless, should have had more attention on it. And it is kind of a shame it didn't. But a very cool film. And Yermo, this is, this is a cool find, man. This is definitely a hidden gem for me. So thank you. Um, I dig it. Anyways, uh, I hope you guys haven't been hearing my kids this entire time because I'm about to go read them the riot act. They've been so fucking loud this entire time and I'm trying to keep my patience and they're distracting the hell out of me and I'm not happy about it because they know exactly what they're doing and exactly what I'm doing. So anyways, excuse me. Uh, I got to go collect some insurance money. Just kidding. Too soon. Adios.